Hello, uh, Happy New Year 2020 and uh, I'm going to do a review today which I haven't done for a while and I'm going to do a review of something I've been promising to do since October 2018 It's finally happening What is the story, morning glory? Uh, by way, sheesh um, So um, Before I carry on I'm going to say I haven't been doing a lot of reviews recently because basically I've been busy I haven't got the time, um, but I do like doing them. That's the thing. I like talking about albums. So uh, going forward, I'm probably not going to do the album background the way I have been doing it. Uh, I'm going to go back to doing it the old way with the old fashioned notepad. Just read you a few facts before I then do a track by track review. Um, so sorry, but I haven't got time to do it the other way anymore, I'm afraid busy lad anyway uh morning glory so uh this is part of the chasing the sun collection chasing the sun collection from 2014 which was for the anniversary now i'm going to do this one coming in 2015 anyway it's not an original pressing is what i'm saying uh opens up to that and then we have got it opens up further if i can get it right here we go the full gatefold um yeah i have also got a morning glory box set somewhere uh i don't know where it is but yeah if you watch my oasis vinyl collection thing it's in that uh i don't know where i put it though heaven knows anyway um it's the morning glory this album was released on the 2nd of october 1995 it was recorded at rockfield studios in wales uh, in March, May and June of 95. I think Rockfield Studios is where Bohemian Rhapsody was recorded. So yeah, very sophisticated studio. Anyway, um, <sighs> produced by Owen Morris and Noel. Uh, yeah, Owen Morris is actually on the cover. Oh, is that picking it up? Yeah, there. Holding the master tapes to the album in the air. Which is quite nice. Uh, so this album peaked at number one in the UK charts and in probably most charts around the world. This was an international success, this album. Uh, it sold over 22 million copies worldwide as of 2018, I think that was, that statistic. And it is the fifth best-selling studio album of all time here in the UK. No, sorry. It's the fifth best-selling album of all time in the UK and the third best-selling studio album of all time. In terms of studio albums, it's only beaten by... It's an Adele album, is it 21, I think, by Adele, and Sgt. Pepper by The Beatles. So, you know, it's quite incredible to think of all the albums that this has outsold, all the classics as such. You know, there's only two albums outsold it. One of them, deservedly so, Sgt. Pepper, obviously. Um, 21, but you know what I mean? You know, what I'm trying to say is... You can't not appreciate this album, you know, and just say Oasis, are, you know, they're not important because this is the third best-selling studio album in the UK of all time. That says something. It obviously means something to people, this album, including myself. Uh, it was the best-selling album in the UK of the 90s. So, yeah, best-selling album of the decade. Uh, at the Brits in 2010, it was named the best album of the last 30 years. So that was from 1980 to 19 to 2010. Uh, the cover shot here is on Berwick Street, which is in London. Like I said, that is Owen Morris holding the master tapes. Don't know who these two are, I don't know if they're just creation staff or just passerbys or just people that they asked. I don't know. And there was, of course, a world tour to support this album. Uh, the Morning Glory tour, which included gigs at Main Road, Loch Lomond and Nebworth. Probably the three most famous Oasis gigs. Anyway... Enough of that rambling. <clears throat> Let's do the track by track review. So before I get into it, most people with Oasis, if you ask them their favourite Oasis album, they will say either Definitely Maybe or Morning Glory. And I don't want to get into the comparisons of Definitely Maybe and Morning Glory because I haven't reviewed Morning Glory, uh, sorry, I haven't reviewed Definitely Maybe yet. So yeah, but most people will pick either this or um, Definitely Maybe as their best albums. You might get people say The Master Plan. But, you know, that's not really a proper album, that's just a compilation album. 
B-sides. So yeah, but it is a good album, I'm not going to deny that. I will review that eventually, at some point. But uh, for me personally, Morning Glory, I prefer. It's my favourite Oasis album, this. Uh, this is the album that got me into Oasis, actually. I uh, first heard this... Oh. God, when did I first hear this? I can remember the first time I heard it. It was in a car. I had my headphones in. I just bought it. And, um, yeah. I can just, it was dark. It was a dark, starry night. And it was a bright moon that night. And I just remember. Because that's the first time I listened to I heard Champagne Supernova. That's what it reminds me of. That's the only reason I remember. That would have been... God, that would be nearly ten years ago, I would say now. So, uh, yeah. This album it means a lot to me. I really love this album. Uh, anyway, opening track is Hello. So this song, it opens with sort of the Wonderwall riff, acoustic thing, and then it just goes out into an oral out rocker, basically. So uh, if you look at the writing credits for this song, it'll say Noel Gallagher, Gary Glitter, and some other fella. Because the end of this song, the guitar lick, the hello, hello, it's good to be back, good to be back, is taken directly from a Gary Glitter song. And uh, Gary Glitter sued. And got given writing credits. So every time someone buys this album or streams that particular song, uh, somewhere in a prison cell now, Gary Glitter is making money from all of us for listening to this album. That's the music business. Um, so yeah, but enough about Gary Glitter because the song itself is great. That doesn't matter that it's associated with a nonce, but whatever. Um, it's a great opening track. Hello, hello, it's good to be back. You know, it's great to be back. You know, we had a lot of fun with Definitely Maybe, and now we're back to top it with this. You know, it's... Is it a good con... I forgot they opened this. Was this what they opened up with at Main Road? Oh, no, that was Acquiesce, wasn't it? They have opened with this before. Um, but, yeah. I think Rock and Roll Star is a better opener than Hello, personally. But, like I said, I'm not going to get into Definitely Maybe Morning Glory comparison. But, yeah, good tune. Roll With It comes next. This was, of course, famously used in the Battle of Britpop when Oasis went up against Blur. Uh, blur put out Country House, Oasis put out this on the same day. Country House got to number one, this got to number two. Um, yeah, Blur won the battle, Oasis won the war, because Country House was off, off the Great Escape. I think that's what the album was called. Yeah, I think it was. It wasn't Park Life, it was one after Park Life. Yeah, it is Great Escape. Because uh, this album was a hell of a lot more successful than that, so Oasis won the war. But Raw with it, um, worst song on the album for me personally. I don't like it. Well, I don't, that doesn't sound right. I don't hate it. I just don't love it. You know, I saw Liam in Newcastle uh, last November 2019. And I just didn't care for him doing this. I never have cared for this song. It's just a bit meh, a bit middle of the road. Anyway, here's Wonderwall, the next track. Um, you got a thing with Wonderwall, you have to have roll with it before, just for the cough, and then into Wonderwall. So, Wonderwall, new to overrated. Uh, Wonderwall is not an overrated song. Let's stop talking bollocks. It's not overrated, it's overplayed. There's a difference. Um, so, Wonderwall. I love this song. You can't not love it. It's effectively becoming the national anthem in this country, here in England. But, um... Wonderwall, it's one of those songs I never really listen to it, but if I'm out in the pub or on a night out or something and this tune comes on, you can't not sing along and enjoy it. Same thing when it's live. It's just a brilliant song. There's no lot to say about it, it's just, it's just brilliant. There's a reason it's overplayed. Same with the next track, Don't Look Back in Anger. Um, same thing as Wonderwall, it's brilliant. You know, it's maybe a bit overplayed, but it's just a great song. It is a brilliant song. Uh, very Beatlesy, this one. Probably the most Beatles sounding thing on the album. You know, it sounds quite Lennon on the verses, a bit McCartney on the chorus, I think. But yeah. Uh, personally, I prefer Don't Look Back in Anger to Wonderwall. Uh, I should say this is a no vocal, which we all know, obviously. 
but um, it's the first song on an album that Noel has the vocals for. Uh, it was also released as a single, first single that was put out with Noel singing the A side. So yeah, it's obviously a big song for Oasis. It's is it a bit? Uh, is Wonderwall or this bigger? It's probably about, it's probably Wonderwall's bigger worldwide, but in this country, I'd say probably don't look back in anger. It's just as big as Wonderwall these days. Uh, after that comes Hey Now, which is a contender, in my opinion, for the most underrated song on the album. My brother doesn't like this song, and I never get it. I never get why he doesn't like it. You know, it's 5 minutes 41, which, yeah, is maybe a bit long, but, you know, it's just a really fun song. I really like it. It's never been done live by Noel or Liam. Oasis never did it live. I just don't get why it's never... It's just a great song. I really like it. Uh, after that, second, the first of the two untitled songs, which is a extract of the Swamp song. About to say about that. Uh, then on the vinyl version, you get Bonehead's Bank Holiday, which you don't get on any other version of the album, just on the vinyl. Um, it's all right. It's how incredible. Uh, I don't really consider when I think of Morning Glory, I don't really think of this song anyway because it's only on the vinyl, just to fill in space. Uh, some might say it comes next, which was Oasis's first number one single. Uh, again, it's a classic anthem. It's just a fantastic song. I've seen Liam do this live uh, in the Hull, MTV Unplugged. Uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Same with the next song, Cast No Shadow. Acoustic thing. Uh, I've seen Liam do this one live in Hull. Brilliant song. Uh, yeah, I love Cast No Shadow. It's a really nice, soothing, sort of chilled out song. And the way Noel, Noel harmonises with Liam on it is perfect. Especially live at, oh, is it Main Road? It's either Main Road or Nebworth. I think it's Main Road. It's brilliant, it really is. Then comes She's Electric. So She's Electric is an interesting song because I think in a recent thing that got released, it's the most streamed non-single off an album of all time, if that makes sense. So a song that's on an album that was never released as a single, this is the most streamed one of all time in the UK. I think the only, I think, seconds here comes a son by the Beatles. Um, and there's a reason. It's a really good song. I can't believe it wasn't a single. It's, again, a contender for my favourite on the album. It's proper catchy, proper upbeat. Really fun song. Uh, Liam's never done it live. Noel's never done it live solo, but with Oasis, they did do it live, but Noel sang it. And, uh, yeah, Noel did it was shit. There's a reason they dropped it from their set. I think it was on the Heath and Chemistry tour when they did it. Don't know why Noel decided to sing it. Maybe Liam couldn't at that stage, but yeah, it doesn't matter. It's a great song. Uh, title track comes next, Morning Glory. It's an anthem. That guitar riff is iconic. What's it to say? It's a brilliant song. Then the second of the two untitled songs, although originally I think Step Out went here, because originally I've got a in that box that I was talking about, I've got a promotional copy of this album on cassette, and Step Out is still on it. I believe it came between Morning Glory and this next untitled track. The reason it got taken off was because Stevie Wonder got his knickers in a twist, thinking it sounded a bit like his song Uptight, which it kind of does, not massively, but yeah, the chorus kind of does, so he wanted co-writing credit, which would mean he'd get a lot of money from this album, so at last minute they took it off to stop him getting all the money. Um, yeah, he does have writing credit. So they obviously did rule in his favour in the courts, but yeah, I think in the end it was B-side to Donald Back in Anger. Uh, but anyway, like I said, second of the two untitled songs comes here, Swamp Song, same as before. Uh, then the closing track, Champagne Supernova, 7 minutes and 27 seconds of pure perfection. Brilliant closing track, when I think of the 90s, I wasn't al well I was alive but I'm too young to remember it. Um, this is the song I think of that probably defines it. You know, just the guitar, the vocals, everything. It's just really dreamy, a bit psychedelic. Which, you know, when you think in 90s, you don't necessarily think psychedelic, but... It's sort of a psychedelic anthem. That's a good way of phrasing it. Um, both Oasis, I think, did this live at every concert after this came out. I think it's a the song they did live the most. Is it, it's either this or Cigarettes and Alcohol. I think it's this. Might be wrong. Uh, Noel's done it live as well, solo. Liam does it live solo. Gotta say, Liam doing it solo, it's a bit boring. It needs the guitar. Liam does it a simple piano ballad. I'm sorry the guitar makes this song. 
the greatest of the vocals are that guitar on this song, which I believe is played by Paul Weller. There's a little fact for you. Uh, yeah, it's just a great song, Champagne Supernova. And yeah, it's a great way to close a great album. So Morning Glory. Overall, what's the story, Morning Glory? What is the story? Uh, it's a brilliant album. It's a masterpiece. It's a British classic. It's a staple. It's part of British culture. You can't claim to be British if you don't like this album. Sorry, that's maybe an unfair thing to say. Um, but yeah. It's morning glory, isn't it? There's not a lot to say. It's just a brilliant piece of music. It's a brilliant piece of art. And the last, one of the last, I would say. Because after this, I don't think anything's ever really came, you know, other than an odd album here and there. You know. It was the last of a dying breed, Oasis, in this album. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's that. I will do Definitely Maybe. Hopefully it won't take me nearly a year and a half to do Definitely Maybe. But uh, yeah, for now, that's Morning Glory. 10 out of 10. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.